science classroom, you probably have a ton of different materials. So today we are talking all about organizing those goodies in your classroom. Aloha teacher friends. I am Fleur, the face behind Aloha Monday teaching, and I help middle school science teachers be intentional, prepared, and refreshed for Monday, Aloha Monday, and any day of the week. So I provide strategies, resources, and encouragement. Um, so don't miss a thing. Make sure that you like and subscribe to, you can like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. And also you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm at Aloha Monday Teaching, where I just post tips and things like that and just fun stuff. And also be sure you get your free guide. This will help you in your classroom any time of the school year. Um, it's five daily must-do routines to run your science classroom like a pro. These are things you um, should be doing every single day, no matter what you are, what the rest of your day looks like. And when you do this, you'll also receive my weekly newsletters full of goodness. So just go to flourishstrongly.com slash daily. All right, so in my blog post, Two Simple Steps for an Effective Classroom Setup, I share ways to set up your science classroom and organize it. So in part one of the video series, we talked about organized, or we talked about setting up your science classroom with desks and tables and things. Um, this is part two of the part of the two-part series, and I will go over organizing all of the materials in your classroom. So I have linked the blog post below in the description, and I also linked another blog post about science lab equipment and how to get them. Um, so that way you can get some cool stuff for your classroom. So, <laughs> all right, let's get started. Um, moving classrooms is a great time to get organized, but so is any time. Um, you can do this any time of year, maybe a little bit throughout the year so you're not completely overwhelming yourself, but uh, because it gets really, really messy, right, when you organize. Um, but it is so worth it. I like to organize as often as I can because it's always, always an area for improvement. Um, maybe you're like me. So first thing you need to do is sort um, all of your materials by category. So what you'll do is pull everything out of your cabinets and off the bookcases and make a mess. Yes, make a mess. If you're doing this a little bit at a time, I would start with like one section of your classroom at a time. Um, so then you're going to sort them into categories. So I just sort them into very broad categories like science materials, grocery store materials, and classroom supplies, and my supplies. So I just start with these big categories first. Science materials include things, um, equipment and safety materials that are provided by your school or district or that you have for your, that you've provided yourself like microscopes, graduated cylinders, beakers, um, slides, microscope slides, trays, test tubes, those kinds of things, uh, safety goggles, that stuff. Grocery store materials are those items that you use for science, but can be purchased at the grocery store, just a regular store, um, like cups, plates, toothpicks, Ziploc bags, foil, wax paper, vinegar, oil, baking soda, those kinds of things. Uh, classroom materials are things that you would like possibly to have your kids to have access to, like markers, paper, books, glue, that kind of thing. And your supplies are things you don't want your students to have access to, like your teaching materials, posters, card stocks, art supplies, games, personal belongings, laminators, all of that, all the goods, right? That's why we're, one of the reasons why we're teachers, we love supplies. <laughs> So once you have everything sorted out, you can determine what kind of storage containers that you need to use. Um, so I find it helpful to put most of my materials in bins. I prefer plastic because I'm not a cardboard kind of person. Uh, most of my bins came from the dollar store, Ikea, Target, or Amazon. Um, I like to choose colors that match my classroom decorations. I, I like the blue and orange. Um, if you have a lot of shoe boxes or you can ask for shoe box donations, those are helpful too and they're free. That way you can store things in there. Um, and then you'll put your materials that are similar into a bin and 
label it and then you're organized. So that's the next step. So I want to give you some examples. So first, I'm going to, this is just, well, a tip is to use plastic bins from the dollar store. So here is. <laughs> Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. Okay. This is a dollar store bin and this holds in my classroom. I use it to hold a lot of different science supplies and it's my colors. So I like it. And shoe boxes make great. I'm not advertising anything. I promise this is just my son's old shoe box, but these make great storage. You can even cover it up and make it your colors so that it's all looking good. Okay. So here's some examples. These are the Ikea Trofast tubs. I love these tubs. I have so many of them in my classroom. Right now, the picture that you're seeing, these are holding uh, the materials for different activities or labs. So that's one way you can use it. I use it for a lot of different things and they're on my counters, they're in my cabinets. Um, I Photo boxes like this can hold little things. They can hold your task cards, index cards, game pieces. They can hold a lot of things. And I also have um, pencil boxes can hold a lot of little things like your markers and classroom supplies for students. And I like book bins. They hold all my teaching supplies. They'll hold my, they'll organize my things that I'm doing Monday through Friday. Like in this picture here, where it says my stuff, the orange and purple, that's for Monday through Friday. And I put what I'm using each day in those tubs. As far as like papers, I'll put my reminders in there when, you know, when you get things from the office and it's like, this needs your attention on Wednesday. Okay, I'll put in my Wednesday bin so that I don't forget. And I know that this isn't blue and orange, like I mentioned my colors are earlier. This is my blue. I do have this in the classroom elsewhere, but the purple and orange is for my Phoenix Suns. So yeah. All right, back on track here. So that those are just some examples of materials, of like how you can store them. All right. So when you, um, when you store your materials on your bookshelves or in cabinets, make sure you group them and label them. It'll make finding your materials so much easier. So for example, this is one setup I have in my classroom. So I have the student area there. That's where they get to get paper and markers and glue. Uh, my personal belongings are by my desk. And then throughout the classroom in my cabinets, I have lab materials and I have them sorted out by some of them are by unit and some are just by type of material like those grocery store materials like all the cups are in one cabinet and things like that so that way I can find it easier and you can even label your cabinets if you want to that's an extra step but the important part is just getting your like materials together so we talked a lot about organizing all of those materials. You want to first get everything out, sort them into category, and then you can group them into like objects or maybe units and then put them in bins and label them. And then your classroom is organized. So it is a lot of work, but it is so worth it. So I hope this gives you ideas, more ideas, and helps you organize your science classroom. Um, let me know what your favorite organization tips are that maybe I didn't share today, or if you gained any new ideas, and reply in the comments. Uh, before you go, please uh, like and subscribe to this channel. And remember to go to fleurstrongoli.com slash daily to get your free guide, five daily must-do routines to run your science classroom like a pro. So with those routines in place, you're going to feel less stressed and in control of your day and your school year. So thank you for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Aloha.